Chat, this is the Play Lamau Station pack. <laughs> it is um, basically alien games on the PlayStation compiled by GNB Man. And there you go. That's it. That's the intro. That's that's everything you need to know. So let us proceed. Listen, aliens are one of the best. I don't know, maybe pizza's a little bit better than aliens, tacos, pizza, I'm not sure, but I do like alien content, so if there's games here I've never seen and never heard of that are alien related, I'm happy. Huh. And I'm also, I'm always looking for classic aliens, like flying saucers, little green men, Fellas with big heads, grays, big eyes. I like that. That's the kind of stuff that I like in my alien content. So. Attack of the Saucer Man. So I have a feeling, I've never heard of this game. I have a feeling this is going to be like a proto destroy all humans. <laughs> the thing intro, yeah. Vinny, didn't you say as a child you were terrified of greys? I was very terrified of grey aliens as a child, yes. Okay, so... Game options. Set the controls for the Heart of the Sun. Continue. What terms the hell? I'm not still afraid of aliens, but... You have to imagine that if aliens can abduct you through a wall, that shit is horrifying as a concept. Oh, these aren't greys. These are like ETs. I th thought you fixed that song. I'm going to be zooming in as soon as I get a uh, gameplay screen. We're gonna fix the croppage. I, I love this. Look at that little fella. It's like a kind of a claymation style. Are they just like Animal Crossing characters? Ed Zunk, greetings from Homeworld. Greetings, Egghead, I mean your excellency. Good cycle, citizen. Chat, this is a lot of text to start a game. I'm sorry, we're, we're just... sorry. <laughs> like, listen, I was willing to give it a chance for a little while because the dudes were cool, but... I really need to find out what the gameplay is like. Oh, we missed a lot. This is like when Quark, Rom, and Nog got, um... They, they went back in time while going to Earth, and then they crash-landed and became the Area 56 aliens. Which is five more aliens than, um, Area 51. Check weapon first. I, I it, the game is very, very slow to get started unless you skip. Okay, so they're going for the the, the classic alien captured. Maybe the saucer crashed. 
Well, the controls are awkward, but it's a PS1 game, you know, using a D-pad, so... You can strafe. He said it crashed? Okay, I was... I, I don't know where my brain was while that was happening. Well, tonight really is like fecal funny night, isn't it? I love the sound effects in this game so much. Chat. Okay. <laughs> I thought I killed them. I just put them in bubbles. Okay, I'm gonna look for a key. Now I killed one? Oh. Chat. What? That's a phone. That's not a key. Off to a great start, aren't we? I've pressed every button. <laughs> uh, th this is this is a problem now. I c I can't find out what the rest of this game is like because I'm stuck here. Try jump shooting the console on the wall. Okay. God damn it, chat member was right. Sure are a lot of sounds happening. Oh, I collected them, I think. Yeah, I collected them. I didn't kill them, I collected them. we go to the UFO now? There's the flying saucer. Wow, we really did just go to the flying saucer. That was actually quite fast. It only took me 10 minutes. It's broken. Who do we need to get it going, Zunk? Well, an electromagnetic amplitude modulator co modulation capacitor, a non-flex tubular amateur, parallel linkage correlating quantifier, and a bioelectric quantum purge regulator. You what? Sorry, they're gold and shiny. He kind of this kind of reminds me a little bit of Earthworm Jim. Someone in chat said, I'd love to see them fuck. And that's why aliens won't visit us, because I have a- I have a reckoning that a good chunk of the population, when aliens would come to planet Earth, people would be like, mm, gotta fuck them aliens. Like, they're getting transmissions, they- they know. They know what's on the internet, they've seen it. They've seen it. Uh, well...
chat, what the fuck? Chat, what the fuck? Okay. There there was a dude in a spacesuit. It wasn't an Amogus. It was a dude in a spacesuit. That's a normal thing, chat. That people, you know. It's fine. It was like a contamination suit. It's fine. They're just going through closed doors. I mean, this is a classic alien game, but it is also weirdly frustrating for me at this present moment. Oh, you can do the splits. Well, that's a, that's a weird way to crouch. Oh my lord. No, the 3D is okay. I mean, it's a PS1 game, and obviously Alien Dude is a sprite. Uh, but we have a bunch of locked doors. Let me check something here, chat, because I think... Let me, let me just check. Zoom in. Uh, I will, but it's so dark it's gonna crop improperly. And you can't improper crop. You know that you can't improper crop. Like, I need to get a full... Like, this will work. Here, I can zoom in now. I can crop. That'll do. You missed the other panel in the ship room. Alright, let's take a look in the ship room and see. Thank you, Jolly, for the Jolly Raid. Appreciate that. There's a panel in the other room. There's another door in here. I didn't see that door. Can't do anything with it. Why did that do that? It's a panel next to... And I'm pretty sure I shot it earlier, too, or I tried to. It opened this door. What? What? I just have to... If I'm gonna play this game, I have to think in the fourth dimension. That's what I need to do. I need to think like an alien. And it does take multiple shots. I know this now. These are things that were not, you know, established. Maybe they said it in a long dialogue text box, but uh, up until then, I wasn't sure I had to do that, but this is- this is fine. I also like that it's like dark hallways with like spotlights on the doors. I think that's a pretty cool artistic choice, and also for hardware limitations, but it, it makes it kind of difficult to see where you're going. But at least I can do this. Chat, you can make weird noises on command. This game is 10 out of 10. all this shit. So you get humans. Are these like alien frogs that have been experimented on and are now dead? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I bubbled live versions of them earlier.
Yeah, it just, um... The, the golden nose thing that's following me around is actually sucking them up. How are you supposed to avoid taking damage? They just, like, lock on and shoot. How'd you find out about this? Um, like I said, someone made an alien pack for me. I didn't know this game existed. This is like... ...as obscure as the information of Area 51. Like, Bob Lazar didn't even know this game existed. Rem Lazar, though, also didn't know this game existed. This was smuggled out of Area 51. Incidentally, Saddam Hussein also lives in Area 51, and they smuggled it out of his dumpster. Like, in his room. His quarters. You know who- you know who did it? Tom DeLonge. That guy. Tom DeLonge. That's the guy who took it from Saddam Hussein's dumpster, in his quarters, at Area 56, which is five away from Area 51, and then Rem Lazar had nothing to do with any of this. But Bob Lazar also... I don't know what this bit is. It's unhinged. I'm, I'm good on this game. So, this is a game called Blasto. This one, I think I've played in a previous year of my life. I don't know when, but I may have never played it. However, this game is famous for Phil Hartman doing the voice of Blasto. It still makes me so angry that Phil Hartman was taken from us so, so early. I hate to say it like that. It's a little cheesy to say it like that, but really, that dude had so much talent. He was one of the funniest, like, most warm... Talented people. Vinny, you played it during a corruption stream. Well, I wouldn't necessarily describe this as classic aliens, but it's fun sci-fi. Yeah, I mean, uh, Andy Dick. Andy Dick is to blame for some of it. Vinny, you did play this before. Yeah, I may have. I just, I've known about its existence. That other game I had no idea about. This game I've known about since, um... God. Like, EGM covered it. Old video game magazines talked about it. Is that a Splatoon squid? Oh, it's a skull. On his shirt. Shut up! Just going to, since we have many games to cover, I'd like to uh, see what the gameplay is like. Who's is these dudes running across the screen? Vinny, I have that EGM issue in my hand as I type. Is that a coincidence, or...? Toast aliens and rescue babes. Honey, I'm home! <laughs> Guess there's a... I don't recall playing this. I always remember seeing it, but not actually... Like... I mean, maybe. 
Oh boy, that aiming reticle. Oh. Jeez. Speaking of rescuing babes, anyone here ever play fucking battle tanks? Where you just had to rescue scantily clad women from the clutches of Mad Max post-apocalyptic type, like, warlords? God, I should play battle tanks. Global Assault or the original? Either? I had battle tanks too, and that game was... It was a lot of fun. It wasn't perfect, but it was just stupid uh. fun, especially in multiplayer. Um, so, someone said that the game hasn't... It's not, like, great, but it's still not bad. I feel like this is one of those games that probably reviewed somewhat well when it first came out, but playing... Oh. Uh, playing it now, I'm, I'm not all that interested. It doesn't... it's not that fun. There is... yeah, there was a Bruce Willis game on the PS1 called Apocalypse, I remember that. And then he had a Fifth Element game. Maybe we could do a Bruce Willis compilation? Oh yeah, you can sidestep. Looks like you've got yourself in a bit of trouble there. How does one rescue? Oh. Well there. Well, I mean, it's a nice attempt at, like, a, a kind of a corny sci-fi superhero dude. I, I like... I, I like... Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Hello, sweet cakes. Yeah, you can't... I don't know about that, buddy. Not anymore, my friend. You can... <laughs> Oh, shit. Ah. Yeah, babes remaining. This is just the 90s. It was 90s was vomit, depressed, long-haired men. Um. And, um. Wayne's World and babes. And, like, probably 10,000 other things, but I'm just gonna mention those four. But no, this, this game is not that fun to play these days. Uh. It's, it's honestly pretty atrocious controlling. But I remember when it came out, I heard good things about it, and I just remembered, obviously, the most notable part is that Phil Hartman did the voice of Blasto. Oof. But I also... Vinny, it was mid. Well, that, that word was not invented in the 90s, chat member. Oh, mama! <laughs> for real, for real. Okay, I, I've actually had enough of Blasto. It's cool to have Phil Hartman, you know, to listen to him and everything, but uh, I kind of feel like the amount of fun in actually playing the game is just not there for me. So we'll play Disruptor. Disruptor is the first game developed by Insomniac Games, who would later go on to make Spyro, Ratchet and & Clank, and Marvel's Spider-Man. I might have played this... on a demo disc. Maybe.
So yeah, early PlayStation. Guess we'll see. I was told also not to skip the intro cutscene. Codename, A55. Reporting for duty. Well, I thought that was funny, chat. Oh, yes. Four short years, we will enter the 23rd century. And thanks to the policies of my administration, the future never looked brighter. But our colonization of the solar system still has its growing pains. As you already know, I too was once a stormer. Of course, that was many years ago, and we were just pioneering the field of psionic weapons. But oh. my experiences in uniform built a foundation of service, loyalty, and of courage. If you can survive the light storm training, you will bear the awesome responsibility of defending global democracy throughout the regions of space. Who knows? Perhaps one day you'll find yourself sitting behind this desk as president of United Earth, commander-in-chief of the light storm forces. Okay, little brother. This is your last chance to change your mind and go home. Oh my home. god. I didn't graduate top ten from the academy. The lighting in the sets are amazing. <laughs> That would have been proud of you, great. This this is going to turn into a porn, isn't it? Are you ready for your first training mission, Private? Sir, yes, sir. All right. <laughs> well, we know what's going to happen next. Simple. Run the gauntlet and get your butt out alive. Now, who's this? My sir? butt, sir. That's the top of your class. Yeah. Troy Alexander. And I'm going to need to he see seems it. Seems to know his way around the block. Mandatory butt inspection, Private. You? Now let's see them well, privates. Psionic, sir. Why would the government waste good money in planting expensive sonic weapons in a cherry recruit? If you don't have the brain power to outmaneuver a few droids with attitude, I never forgive myself for sending you on a real mission. Droids with attitude. Just remember, think fast, shoot fast, and kick ass. <laughs> shoot fast, think fast. And eat ass. Walk softly and carry a big stick. Especially when you sidestep the corners. And you'll do just fine. Oh my god. Okay, I've, I don't think I've played this. I definitely haven't played this. So yeah, it's a first-person shooter with the original non-analog PlayStation controller. I mean, they're strafing. That's nice. They made the levels in Microsoft Excel? What? H how? That, that chat member, are you... You're making that up. That doesn't make any sense. They planned them in Excel. That makes way more sense. Like, they just had someone type E equals MC square in Excel, and then design some maps, and then put it in the computer. And then it was whisked away into PlayStation land, and became maps. I mean, for 1996, I guess it's... I guess it's okay so far. It's a little, uh, claustrophobic. But, uh, it looks decent for PlayStation. It's got a good frame rate. Controls are as good as they can be, I think. Maybe a little faster would be nice. Uh, there's no control options. But being able to turn a little faster would be... ...like the main thing I would want uh, to change. But, I mean, this is definitely a Doom clone, if you want to call it that. And it's not a bad one. So far, at least. It's, it's a little... ...you know, sci-fi themed, alien themed, that's cool. Future City. Please watch more cutscenes on YouTube. If there are any good cutscenes, and any chat members manage to find them, 
I'd be open to that, but they've, they've got to be good. But in any case, this is just the training, right? So... We'll be shooting like fellas. Vinny, there are, but they're on Pornhub. Okay. One of the actors was a host of Wild and Crazy Kids on Nickelodeon. Dog, I used to watch that. What the fuck? Mission complete. Oh, that's good. Boy. Oh, instead of saving, one must enter a code. That that is just from whisking like hell. bakery. I say the first one hurts the worst. How many psionics did your dad have? I don't know, like four or five. <laughs> All the psionics in the world couldn't have saved him from that terrorist ambush. He didn't say terrorist if sandwich, right? Keep your eyes open. And watch your ass. Uh, which psionic did we get, sir? We've, that's the second time ass has shocking. been mentioned. Maybe it's time you tried it out. Now you know this training mission won't be a cakewalk like the last one. I want you to get through the chem factory alive. And don't forget... Watch your ass. Good stormers always think on their feet. I like when he says, watch your ass, and then smiles. You'll be facing organic enemies this time. I want butts! So I want them now! The phase rifle and cook them till they're well done. What was that from? The I want butts and I want them now. That was, um... Oh, fuck. What movie was that? That was Top Gun? Oh, yeah, the original Top Gun. That's right, that's right. Someone said my Google search history. <laughs> that's pretty funny, chat member. You are a comedian. I mean, I gotta give it credit for having, like, levels that are more than just, like, um, flat levels. Like, there's an attempt at creating... ...some environments... ...in some detail, and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm- I think this is... This is a game, you know, I haven't played very much of it, but... ...my initial impression is good enough that if I got this as a gift when I was a kid... ...I would have played the fuck out of it. Especially considering Blasto... Blasto is a really cool concept. But it plays like shit. And this, I could see myself playing no problem. No, 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 no. I mean, it's not, it's not the best game I've, I've played, but it's okay. God, fucking gated reverb. Thanks, Phil Collins. So, in order to switch weapons... ...you have to use your weapon wheel. Oh, you do get, like, some kind of brain blast... ...technique. Um, but it doesn't freeze time. Like, that's one thing, the weapon wheel freezing time... ...in modern first-person shooters is a godsend. Mm -hmm. 
one thing I especially love about this environment is that it's just piss. Let's see if we complete. get another cutscene, and then I'll stop. It was originally going to be a 3DO game, but they got a PS1 dev kit, and it was way better, so 3DO got cancelled. <laughs> Good. And that was nice going back in the chem lab. <laughs> Real nice. Real nice. I think you actually beat my record. Thanks. Man, aren't you getting tired of playing these games? I am. They say if we're calling it a game, we're still not ready for a mission. Are you kidding me? Man, I haven't missed one trick. Not even that hidden stuff. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm not tired of the games, but Just aluminum foil space blankets. Brain. How's it work? I'm definitely we'll not tired of either. <laughs> so what's the mission? Find hidden a stuff. Pressure IQ test. They want to see if you can nail the bad guys without blowing away any of the hostages. Yeah, nail them. Hostages? Mm hmm. In the words of your brother, being a stormer, it's more than just kicking ass. Show ass. you got what it takes, and then maybe, just maybe, we'll send you out on a real mission. <laughs> This is what gamers want. Yeah, yes. Chat, give me one second. Be right back. I need a hoodie. There aren't enough bullets in the solar system to blast all those terrorists. Oh. So use your psionics. But don't waste the hostage droids. Or you've missed the point of the mission. Alright. I'm back. I'm back, chat. <laughs> I almost fell. Like, I went to go sit back in my chair, and you know, like the in the in the the, the, the roller chairs, they have the the bottom um, the, the the wheel extenders. Um, I'm not describing this very well. I stepped on one of those, and I almost fell. Here are the cutscenes. Oh yeah, there's a whole playlist of cutscenes. Um, I don't know if any of them are worth watching, but we could watch more of them at some point. I'd like to move on to another game. E.T. returns to video games after pulping the industry in the 80s. <laughs> Space gardening simulator, mostly interesting just because it exists. Hi chat member, thank you for joining. Whoever you are. I might have played this game once, yeah. I just can't believe they would do this again. And not make a Mac and Me game instead. Sponsored by McDonald's. You played this years ago in a shovelware showcase. So what you're trying to tell me is, I, I played this because I have a physical copy. I think that's exactly what you're saying, and I think that's exactly what happened. Well, chat member, if you'd like to see it in more detail, any of you, definitely go seek that out. But I will try this, and um, I'll show you what it looks like. And you tell me if you think this looks like the movie. I do not miss loading times like that. Healing. Hold to heal. Collect. Oh, I remember the noises. I hate this. And it controls like shit, too.
someone said, I like how every E.T. game manages to suck. Well, here's a real question. Why did we need E.T. video games? Like, nothing about the movie E.T. screams video game to me. By the way, for the record, I do not like E.T. I think the movie is schmaltzy space penis garbage. It's fine. It- the movie is fine. It's not a bad movie, I know that. I just never had the nostalgia for it. And I think it's so... Like... It's so cheesy. Sure, as a kid, it's a different thing, because you're watching it. Maybe if you watched it in the 80s, it's like, wow! I think it's just fine. It's not one of my favorite Spielbergs. I- I will not watch that movie. If I don't need to. <laughs> It was the perfect family film, so it blew up. Well, you know what else blew up? E.T.'s hog. Because this dude looks like an engorged space peep. And I'm definitely... I'm definitely not into it. Oh, you have to shoot it a couple times, then it drops the mushroom. Oh. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. We're still in the, the training missions, unfortunately, but um, that's, that's the whole thing. It, it's almost like an arcade-type game, because... It's so... simple. It focuses on a couple mechanics. I remember it being really shit. And, um... And that's it. That's the E.T. game. It's not worse than the original E.T. game. Which is still not the worst game ever made. It's just... like, not good and... boring and... and, you know... Five weeks of development time. It was not a... The thing is, everyone likes to say it's the worst game ever made. Not everyone, but people say that. I've played worse. God, I've played worse. Space Bull. <laughs> I think he liked it, chat. Why does he turn gray? When he gets injured, what the fuck? Oh. I'm done. Th that's enough. Really, that's enough. Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. Here's one I've never heard of. I'm missing the firmware for it. I mean... No. It's a... It's a PlayStation game. Uh... Pal? How do I do that in BizHawk? Is there a way? Hell exclusive game not based on the book or movie, but Jeff Wayne's studio album of the same name. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, let me try one more time. Hang on, chat. Let me go to the PlayStation thing here. So, um, I, I mean, I have it. I just don't know how to do it. Fuck. All right, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's go to MDK. 
Murder, Death, Kill, I believe is the name of this one. Oh, God, it froze. One of the best games on the PlayStation, in my opinion, says the, the chat member who made this. Play as a gliding cyborg and shoot aliens from the ground or snipe them from a safe cover. From safe cover. Very charming and unique. Didn't this have the... Was this the game with the lady with the tear on her face, or was that a different game? Well, in any case, I remember hearing about this being good. And apparently... Oh, that's Forsaken. Okay, this is MDK. Apparently it was better on the PC, according to chat members. Ugh. immediate action and I don't even know what I'm looking at It's a little scorny. Like, it's like proto scorn. Oh, God. Do not mention Lawnmower Man. Please. Mods, if you see someone mention Lawnmower Man, please, please remove them. By the way, I can't skip any of this. Wow. Okay, well we have to play we we have to play the PlayStation version because this is what we have right now. Oh, I could skip it, my mouse was not in the game. Good for me. Huge City Mine Crawler is headed straight for the coastal city of Laguna Beach. And anyone there now? Is MDK a Demolition Man reference? Could be. Monkey? What? Okay, so the dude is a sprite. In the PC version, is the dude a sprite or a 3D? Chat. Also a sprite? Okay. I mean, the gameplay is pretty fucking fluid. World's smallest nuclear explosive. Chad, there's an awful strange decision. To look around, you hold 
triangle, and to shoot, you press, like, X. It's a little weird. But, you know, it was still the 90s, they had to figure th these things out, and it's fine. It's actually really decent. No, I know the PS1 didn't ship with analog sticks, it's just... Maybe R1 or R2 would have made it... ...work a little bit better. Can you double jump? Vinny. What? Shoot the targets using sniper mode. Oh, yeah. How about that, chat? We found sniper mode. Is there a way to zoom in? Y you would imagine us. Oh, oh, oh. Holding up a little target. <laughs> So I'm just getting used to the, the controls here, and it, it's fucking weird. So you gotta press select to go into this mode, and then triangle zooms in. It's, it's like, just got a weird feel to it. I need to zoom out. Okay, zoom, I, I figured it out, chat. I figured it out. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Jet Force Gemini. Gotcha. Yeah, this this would take some doing to get used to, but I. I would imagine if I had this game as a kid as well, I'd probably get into it. It's... Just playing it... It's already... It's a little confusing right off the bat, like I say, but it's definitely more... Use the parachute to get the more... Oh, it's definitely, like... Somewhat forward-thinking... For the time of its release. Does one shoot the mortar? Vinny, you fired it already. Oh wait, no, there, there it is. Okay, there it is. Sniper grenade? Yeah, shoot them right up close. Any minute now. Shoot that toilet real quick. What? Dummy decoy? Oh. I mean, it literally just told me what to do. Yeah, I don't- I don't know. See, this is one of those things where I respect it. I would play it, uh, you know, during its time of release, but I don't think I would play through it now. I mean, I usually don't, because, you know... There's a lot of stuff, but it, it feels like this is definitely a step ahead for its time, 
But now, of course, I'd probably get frustrated playing it. Good graphics, though, for PS1. Like... But yeah, it seems like a lot of this game is sniping. PC version holds up, plays like an FPS. It's cool. There's much to be shot, much shooting to do, and you can slide with a weird parachute. It's murder, death, kill! And you're in a jabroni outfit. Remember the Men in Black animated series? Eh, me neither. Here's a game based on it. Is it good or is it... good? Probably neither. That is what it says in the notepad uh, file for this game here, chat. So that's not my question to you, because I do remember the Men in Black cartoon. I didn't really watch much of it. I love the movie. Men in Black is one of those watched a thousand times when I was a kid, but I didn't watch the show very much. Might have seen a couple episodes. All right, Unit A55. It's time to get down to business. Just start the game without training. We don't need training. Oh my god. Let's see. One ride here for us. I'll be the judge of Coney Island accuracy. I'll let you know how accurate it is. Illegal planet I don't know. In progress. Coney Island. <laughs> KJ, get down there and stop it. On our way. Oh my god. Do, Z -Man. Oh my Z -Man. god. I'm telling you, it was 16 feet tall. There were tentacles and teeth. That was Will Smith going from cartoon to cartoon to 3D model. Thank you. We'll take it from here. The irony, chat. The irony is that this agent looks more like Chris Rock. Freaky dude, go. I saw him and his family head off towards the ghost train. Now, sir, if you could just look at the red light here. So, we've got a family of alien hillbillies that want to go to a galactic tractor pull. Kind of, yeah, sounds like Chris Rock more so than it sounds like Will Smith. Protect the entrances, like, keep all visitors out. And you? I'm going in. <laughs> all right, fake Tommy Lee Jones, whatever you say. You know what to do, Kay. Clear the ghost train of rowdy aliens and make sure you track down the would-be escapees. Shut down power to the ghost train. Clear the ghost train of aliens. Locate the entrance to the red rocket. Well. Can you do a suplex? Oh, it's a fucking first person shooter? Wasn't expecting that. Ugh. Oh, oh god. Oh god. It has generous auto aim. That's a bonus. We've got, like, three FOV, which is beautiful, as you know.
I, I, so, something has to happen here, right? I mean... I'm pressing every button. Alright, whatever. I didn't think Coney Island had an extensive, like, dark ride like this. Like a funhouse ride that actually has, like, carved mountains. Also, what a- what a choice for a first level. The aliens secretly made it. If you told me that aliens were the ones that built Coney Island from the start, I would probably believe that. So wait, are these aliens or skeletons? Oh wait, I thought those are aliens. Gameplay. Y'all got another weapon I could use, or...? Oh, it's a charging station for your weapon. It took me too long to figure that out, chat. I think I've had enough of this. Not as good of an FPS as the previous game. The controls are not as responsive. There's only one weapon so far. Um, the best part is this mummy, probably. And the fact that it takes place in Coney Island, which, I mean, alright, let's be honest here. It's just a generic amusement park. The Silent Hill 3 amusement park has more in common with Coney Island than this does. I know. I've been there. Like a dozen and a half times. Which is a dozen and a half times too much. Oh, we got a firmware problem again. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sort this out real quick. Don't worry, chat. We'll, we'll have it back up and running in just a second. If you're worried, now's not the time to be worried. Just normal. Just normal stuff. I think we might be good in three, two, one. Okay, that sound was actually starting to get to me, so thank God that's over. All right, uh, let's try this. If this works, I can go back to that other game. You know what? I'll test it with this other game. Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, you can hear the different pitch.
it's fun it's the spice that adds to the experience I'm telling you, chat, this is- this is normal. Just not for Americans. In England, everything is slightly lower pitch. Pip pip cheerio! years of the 19th century that human affairs were being watched from the timeless worlds of space. No one could have dreamed we were being scrutinized as someone with a microscope studies creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Art. And then they discovered that we wanted to Few men see their dumpies. The possibility of life on other planets. And yet, across the gulf of space, Minds immeasurably superior to ours regarded this Earth with envious eyes. And slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. Whoa. Someone called Tom Cruise. Chat, what if someone remakes War of the Worlds, but they come to Earth in 2020? Anyway, this is um, Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. I don't know if it's his take on War of the Worlds or if this is a take on War of the Worlds with his music, whoever this guy is, but that's fine. Good morning. It's very, Good morning, sir. very nice. Corporal. Beautiful. Did you have your tea this morning? Gentlemen, we are at war. Yesterday morning, a bizarre transport landed at Horsell Common near Woking. It contained what is now believed to be an advance of an invading army. For without provocation, its occupants attacked civilian and military targets. We have with us a journalist who was an eyewitness. Hopefully, he can enlighten us. When I discovered this was a PAL game, I didn't think it was going to be. Hello! At midnight on the 12th of August, a huge mass of luminous gas erupted from Mars and sped towards Earth. Across 200 million miles of void came the first of the missiles that were to bring so much calamity to Earth. Ogilvy, the astronomer, assured me we were in no danger. He was convinced there could Ogilvy. be no living thing on that. That's very England. Forbidding. Planet. Hello, my name is Ogilvy. I sorry the to the Brits that watch this channel. A flare spurting out from Mars. A beautiful but somehow disturbing sight. Then came the night the first <laughs> missile approached Earth. <laughs> what is this gameplay going to be? I don't know what kind of game this is. Next day there was a huge crater in the middle of the common, and Ogilvy came to examine what lay there. A cylinder. 30 yards across, glowing hot. A rhythm game. With faint sounds of movement coming from within. Oh man. Oh man, those are very human. Began moving, Humans. Rotating, unscrewing. And Ogilvy feared there was a man inside trying to escape. He rushed to the cylinder, but the intense heat stopped him before he could burn himself on the metal. A crowd gathered. Ogilvy! Ogilvy! Hypnotized by the unscrewing of the cylinder. Suddenly, the lid fell off. A huge, rounded bulk, larger than a bear, <laughs> rose up slowly. Its lipless mouth... It's using a talk box and chat. ...and snake-like tentacles writhed as the clumsy body heaved and... They're like... Pulsated. They look like they're in, like, Victorian era, but Both they're not. And a few young men crept closer to the pit. A tall funnel rose... Then a ray of heat leapt from man to man, 
and there was a bright glare as each was. It is. Oh, all right. My bad then. Oh. Okay. The Martians continued hammering and. I don't know why I thought it wasn't. Indefatigable at work upon the machines they were making. People clawed their way off the common, and I ran too. I felt I was being toyed with. But when I was on the very verge of safety, this mysterious death would leap after me and strike me down. Is that porn guitar? That evening, a company of soldiers came through and deployed along the edge of the common to form a cordon. Oh, I love I like the slide guitar. Quickly, one after the other, four of the fighting machines appeared. Monstrous tripods. I mean, the music is, is pretty great. Walking engines of glittering metal. Now, is this actual excerpts from the book? The pounding of guns from the combo grew louder. There was a heavy explosion. The ground heaved and gusts of smoke erupted into the air. And I realized that by... The American, album has spoken words escaped. to the songs. The conflict spread across the area with very high casualties. Mercifully, our artillery managed to finally destroy the invaders. Little is known about these Martians, except that they're resolved upon conquest, and their technology is far more deadly than ours. Observations of the other incoming missiles imply that they have changed course, perhaps in light of our victory, to land in Scotland. All of our forces are being mustered to face them. Our chief scientists and engineers are already working on technologies which may aid us. We must face and destroy this Martian threat. For if we fall, the rest of the world must surely follow. Gentlemen, good luck. All right. Puzzle game. Here we go. Apparently, the PC version of this is a strategy game. I don't even... I don't even know what's going on here, chat. But, uh... I'm confused about a lot of things, but apparently there's a spoken word. This is based on a spoken word album. That's what the music is, right? But then you also have this aspect of... Is it based on the book? Is there a book? Was that from... the late 1800s? Why are we now not in the 1800s anymore? Was it a, a radio play? I, yeah. Well, you get to drive a vehicle, which is also kind of what I was not expecting. It's a little rough, that. It's just a quaint little English town. Now to test your basic shooting skills. Oh, it's trying to do a bunch of different things. Bap. Bap. This might get DMCA nuked. Much like War of the Worlds itself. But I will say I am enjoying the music. Gameplay is just as basic as it comes. 
don't really have much to say about it other than I'm shooting balloons. At some point, I guess you'll be shooting aliens. Someone also said there's an alien campaign. Orson Welles' radio play was an adaptation 40 years after H.G. Wells' book. Orson changed the setting to the USA. This music is way better than what I'm looking at and playing. And shooting again. Okay, there you go, chat. There's there's the their war worlds. I mean, the cutscene was at least interesting. I want to see the beginning of the alien camp. Okay. Fire leapt from house to house. The population panicked and ran. This was no disciplined march. It was a stampede without order and without a goal. It was the beginning of the rout of civilization, of the massacre of mankind. Nice. I actually kind of like the Tom Cruise uh, War of the Worlds, the Spielberg one. I think it's it's a pretty decent movie. I haven't seen it in years, but maybe I would like it. Music player. Oh, you want to just listen to the soundtrack? It's all here. Pretty cool, bro. That, that stuff was pretty good. Um, chat, how do you start the Martian campaign? Or the, the alien campaign? Is there even a way to do that? Or is it chat making that up? PC only. No, that's a PC only thing. Alright. Well, I mean, it was fascinating that it exists. But yeah, I don't actually want to spend time playing the game. This game is called Planet Laika. This has a slow build, so please enjoy the absolute insanity for as long as you can. It's an adventure RPG starring a dogman with a split personality disorder, translated from the original Japanese by fans. Huh? Wait, Enix? L-A-I-K-A. Laika? Laika was a dog, the first mammal in space. そんなことが本当にあなたの身の上に起きたらどうしますか<笑> 
心の中に別な人格を住まわせていますそれも三人もどうしてそんなことになったのか自分じゃない自分が三人もいて平気なんでしょうかお話の舞台となる火星にはあらぬ妄想をかき立てる力が潜んでいるというではありませんかおお恐ろしい厄介なことにならなければいいのですがね<笑> OK Yeah, fever dream is one way to describe this. Already. Also, chat, there's a. Yeah, I can't do getting weird with it tonight. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to hold on to that one. I didn't expect Jabroni Brawl to go as long as it did, so we'll have to delay that to next week. But、um, I'll give you the rest of the Alien games if I can. I'm approaching the four hour mark and the perimeter of the face in the Cydonia region. Okay, now that's pretty cool. The face. Damned Martians always trying to taunt us. That's something that was very interesting to me when I was younger. Who knew the face pact would lead to such an unhappy end? Theory says that our faces were what triggered the Martian extinction. Aye, those filthy Martian bodies didn't deserve our pure human faces. One theory says it was triggered by bacteria we brought from Earth. I don't care, Captain. Blame facial bacteria all you want. <laughs> What? Wait, are they? They're dogs, aren't they? <laughs> they're dogs! <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's because you're a dog, Luigi! Oof! There's nothing redeeming about Mars or anybody living on it. Oh my god. This is. This is just the plot to the expanse. Some pretty good pre rendered backgrounds. I mean. You know, obviously, Enix was the competitor to Square at the time before they combined. But you're headed to Mars. This is no ordinary survey. Threatens to halt our terraformation plans. Yeah, nice face. It's Avatar, but not blue. Maybe. God is dead. I am the light. And with that, his unit cut contact. Is this fucking event horizon now? Our mission now is to find who or what sparked the rumor. Then we can declare Mars safe to terraform. Well, th that's a hell of a start to a plot. I have a feeling there are going to be a number of people in my chat actually playing this game after this. Just to see what the fuck any of this is. I, why, why are they dog people, though? Like, why are they dog people?
Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra on the left there. Is that Cyrillic on the door? Leica was sent to space in a Russian ship. Oh, I get why they're dogs now. Was it like, wait, 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 is it like Planet of the Apes, but dogs? Maybe aliens were like, oh, this is the dominant species on the planet. <laughs> There is no God, I am the light. Okay, some more discussion. I just want to see what... Where it goes from store. I haven't played more... This is like Metal Gear Solid. I haven't played more than a second. Dognov. Whoa. Yeah, isn't that face not a face when you actually look at it from like a different angle? It was just a, like a, a really perfect photo. Or so they said. That's the face. It really does look like a face. They are calling themselves humans. This is only one of the faces of evil. It's a fever dream, you know what? <laughs> I wish you didn't include the translated version. This would have been almost better without any text. It is space madness. This planet, this is the planet's sick power. Great, thank you. The monsters are in the mind. Got it. Chat, check behind your mind before bed. That's my favorite character. Long ago, Earth and Mars made a pact where humans surrendered their faces to the Martians in exchange for peace. As soon as the Martians wore these faces, their kind went extinct, and the planet was overtaken by runaways and exiles. Then, as if on of its own will, Mars began to emit a vile energy that fed malice. That energy was named Evil Mind. What do you mean?
Yudav. Yumstav. Someone said, what is the name of this game again? Um, it's called Planet Laika. L-A-I-K-A. Also, someone noted that this is the Chrono Trigger font. It may not be the exact typeface, but it looks... It, yes, it's extremely, extremely similar if it is not the exact one. just want to see, like, a battle. Well, we're on Mars now. Chad is saying the battles in this game are really fucking weird. I would expect nothing less. Oh, the music is wonderful. I mean, this is music, right? I think I saw a movie like this. It was called Red Planet or Mission to Mars or something. Same movie. One of them was better. They're actually they're two Mars movies that released around the same time. And I forget which one I liked better. I don't remember them other than Mars and Sandstorm. Are we just glossing over the fact that the four dogs are supposedly only one person? I don't know what you're I don't know anymore anything. I don't know what you what does that mean? What does that what does that mean? Anakin over here. Remember the intro. Bro, that was like five days ago. Still no gameplay. It really is like the meme. Like the Metal Gear Solid meme. Something's happening. Dog knob, are you talking to the stars again? Get a life space brain. <laughs> Don't look at me with those eyes. What the fuck is this game? Like it turns pink and dies. Yeah, pretty much. Is that an ear? Oh, it's like a statue. Okay, now the soul has left the body. All four of them. They are one person, I guess. V yep, Vladimir and Sergey. Where are 
we anyways? This place is a shithole. I'm not feeling any of the Christmas cheer here. Not with things this desolate. We're on Mars. Dognov is on a mission to Mars. Something on the planet's surface is affecting Dognov's mind. Are these the cosmonauts that went up with the dog? There's some, like, alien bullshit that happened, and they became the consciousness of the dog, and combined the humans with the dog? Or something? I, I, Laika went alone? Alright, then I don't know. I, I don't know anymore, anything. There's a chat member saying they gave their faces to the Martians, as if that helps me understand the story. <laughs> like, I appreciate it, chat member, but I don't understand any of that. And now there's this. And, and now there is this. They're talking about auras now. <laughs> this is a joke. This isn't real. So this is, this is a fake game. Oh, well, I almost got to move more than three feet. Did my character just shit themselves? <laughs> evil aura is a sensation felt by all humans on Mars. When you're touched by evil, it changes you. The Delta is near. This planet is horrible in more ways than one evil and evil in more ways than that. Do you think you can handle it? This game sure is face. Chat, this could have been called Faces of Evil. But, you know, it was taken. That does look like Zuckerberg on the bottom left of the screen. Why does it look like Zuckerberg? Because... Zuckerberg isn't real, either. <sighs> the first battle isn't until 45 minutes in. Chat. That's what a chat member says, I believe him.
chat member posted a video, and it says this video isn't available anymore, so... Yeah, chat, there's still a long way to go before we get to a battle. Like, I just found where we are. We're, like, right now in the video, we're 26 minutes in, so it will be another 20 minutes. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to show you a video of the battle. Because I, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to be playing that long. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Great! <laughs> it's like the thing from Star Trek The Next Generation where they play the game in their glasses and they get really addicted to it. Oh, it's Pong. <laughs> Alright, never mind then. I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit in the video. Okay, they, there's an FMV of a dog creature. And another dog creature. Okay. There's Jazz. Like, strange Martian town? I mean... There's more stink. Is that a poodle? There's a whole lot more blacking out. I'm- I'm good. I th I think I've had enough of this. Uh, really fucking weird game. Someone said, after years of watching all the weird games you find, this is still one of the most insane games I've seen played all the way through. Well, I'm- I personally am not playing all the way through it, but... You know, feel free to do- uh, that's a blue mogus, thank you. Feel free to do so yourself if you- if you think that this is... ...pretty great. Um... It's really, really unique. I give it that. And, uh... I didn't expect anything like this tonight. So I don't even really know where we can go from here. Um... I'll check out a couple more. I don't think we're gonna top this one, though. Uh, okay, there's a Superman game that's like a prototype, but it's not working, so... Never mind. Um... Not as many classic aliens as I expected, like... Whatever the fuck that last game was... ...was weird Mars shit. We had War of the Worlds, but we only had like one Area 51... ...like, alien shoot and escape Area 51. 
Yeah, Nortz is like sitting here watching this. Like, what the fuck are you playing, dude? Play, play some. I need to see some great alien nussies. <laughs> I'm fine. In the year 2041, <laughs> we're not that far off. <laughs> Wow. The North American continent was wracked by a series of brutal wars. But as terrible as it was, this is already amazing. Only the beginning. For light years away in the cold abyss of space, another enemy is gathering its forces. It's beehives. The first stage of the attack was in the form of thousands upon thousands of pods. They were the harbinger, beginning of the end. Unlike anything we'd seen before, this alien infection could convert anything it came into contact with. Yes, live action. Yes! The pods converted everything into mindless machines. Wow, he went from His real to 3D model. had no purpose but to destroy or convert still others. There's that and classic Ah Real Monster sound effect. What little defense we had was crushed almost overnight. <laughs> the few remaining scientists like myself were brought together to attempt Does this dude have an NES peripheral on his head? <laughs> might be. Dr. Bowen, yes. it's in the tube. It's unopened. Yes, it appears to be a malfunction. Of all the pods that had rained down on our world, was the only one that hadn't opened. I've never seen anything like it before. It's seemingly organic. If we could just find a weakness. Let's begin with an in vivo crystallization. I'll alert Dr. Cortez. Fine, thank you. Uh Miranda. She was my only daughter and all I had left in a dying world. <laughs> I thought she would be safe with me. Dad, why do they have to use mice for the experiments? <laughs> Yet, I had sealed both our fates oh, no. by bringing her to that dangerous place. I love you. She's like a last action hero actress. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Rerez reviewed this, it's shit. Says a chat member. Well, this is amazing. This is worth the price of admission alone. Linda. No. I was powerless. That was too, yeah, I'm sorry, too late. Miranda too. Someone said, imagine this being your first acting gig. M imagine this being your last acting gig. And then you always have to think about that for the rest of your life. Like, oh, why did I take that role? God, a thousand dollars was not enough. Miranda was only partially oh. converted. She, she became Part the fucking um, queen from StarCraft. I'm going to do everything. She's Kerrigan. The time was running out. The plague had come to claim its own. As I struggled to help Miranda, I could only wonder. I was gonna say Borg Queen, but no. Destruction or no. Salvation. No. Graphisk. So good. The virus took her clothes. <laughs> like, this is the only outfit she could be in, or did the virus mutate into clothes? Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. She, th listen, the virus rotted her clothes off. You know who wrote this? Patrick Stewart. Oh no, by, by then it's much too late. I've seen everything. Human 
And then this is the game that we get. That was a doom noise. She breathes through her skin. Chat, she breathes through her skin. You don't understand, it's a condition. So gameplay is shit. Chat member was correct. God, and what a shame, too, after those intro cutscenes, which were just uh, on the, the... The, like, best part of, of the schlock spectrum. Oh, what? Are we making a phone call? Oh, it's like... story. Human killed! Uh-oh. Alright. Yeah, I can't get the Superman prototype. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna do... Terracon. Okay, Terracon has the most beautiful in-engine cutscenes I've ever seen on the PlayStation. You may even need to emulate this one at a lower resolution if it starts to skip on you. You can explore the generally empty open world, but I recommend following the instructions in the tutorial closely for a Sunday showcase. North America never got this really cool and ambitious game. So this, this is the back cover. Ah, oh, yes, the Queen's English. Of course. Have you ever heard the the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? No, ha chat, have you heard Mia Garth speak? She's like, well, me mummy and me nanny, well, we was all at the country fair. I watched that X movie recently. For whatever reason, my friend Dan came over. It's like, you want to watch a shitty movie? And we watched X, which is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre with Mia Goth and like, um, it's like the victims are porn actors. It's not that good, but it's not that bad. And I laughed a lot. And there were moments where I was like, this is insane. I enjoyed it. Mostly. We enjoyed making fun of it while watching it. But, um, Mia Goth, it, it plays a Southern like porn star, but then you hear her real voice and she's just like, Hello! Watch Pearl, Scorsese loved it. Well, if Scorsese loved it, then I might have to check it out. I agree that the, um, I know we were, I was talking shit while that, that was happening, but I agree that the intro cutscene, the in-game, in-engine cutscenes are very impressive. The aliens have lips. Note the resolution, or like, the screen size has, has been shrunken. This is a really nice looking P uh, PS1 game. Damn. Sony published it. Oh, it released in 2002. I don't know why I said that like that and not 2002, but.
Yeah, you're an alien fella, and, and, uh... I can see for miles. That's the master FOV right there. Beautiful. This is the, the PlayStation visuals I am nostalgic for. Like, stuff that looks this good. But how do I zoom my camera in? Collect the Genergy? But yeah, it's an open world game. Golden eye snipe noise. There's even like fucking wildlife just flying around and stuff. I mean, it's a little awkward like to control, but it's still Damn, this is this is pretty cool for PS1. Does this support the analog sticks? Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, however, I do not have them set up properly. Rabbit. Chat, what do you think PS1 games would look like if we never got a PS2 <clears throat> and they were still making games for PS1? <clears throat> Excuse me. That was a weird voice thing there. Like this? But surely they could have found a way to like squeeze more power out of it over years, right? Like like, maybe better than this a little bit. Man, that would be interesting. An alternate, like, reality where we reached a power limit with PS1 and, like, in Dune, the Butlerian Jihad, where it's like, if you go beyond the power limit of a PS1 in any piece of technology, you're just shot. Because there's something to do with, like, breaking quantum mechanics or so I don't know, like, someone smarter than me can figure it out. But, like... Yeah. And it's just, like, for the next 50 years, we had a PS1. And, and only... The only games we have are PS1 games. Is this dude got a fucking umbilical cord coming out of his ass? Shoot. Man. Shoot. Oh. Boy. Yeah, the controls are awkward in, in regards to, like, aiming. The PS1 Indian homebrew game scene is worth looking at. Yeah, because that's one of the things I was thinking of, like, some of the GBA games that I've played, where people are still making games for Game Boy Advance to this day, and doing some, like, really impressive shit technologically with it. Flying target practice now. So yeah, it's all big tutorial stuff. I mean, it's you play as an alien, so that fits the theme of today's stream. Um, the game itself is interesting. 
Maybe not as interesting as that last game, but not many games are. Oh, water. Alien is allergic to water, chat. Okay. That's Terracon and Titan Wars. I just want to see this last one, and then I want to get going because I am tired. Getting weird with it will be next week. I'll even throw in some additional weirds. Hey, if you have any good weirds that you'd like me to play, go to um, the email. Vinesauce.email, right? That's what it is. Go to that web zone and fill out the form. Smash the scroll. Bang the bell. Top-notch content last two weeks, man. I'm really thankful. I think it's been good, but uh, I have to thank, like, the people who make corruptions, the corruption team. I came up with the idea to do the shitty ads, but you know, when it comes to corruptions, I can't really take too much credit for that. And I have to thank Amogus VR and like Jerma and Kraken and Jolly and everyone for joining. It's still jamming our distress call. Starting uplink procedure to Telsat 5. Sue, we just lost the number 4 line. It's a full cascade. How I long? love all these live Last action cutscenes so much. Initiating unmanned launch cycle. It's a 10G push, Susan. You'll never make it. Watch me. <laughs> this is Susan Powell from the Grange Mining Colony, Facility 17. We're under attack. The ships are being flown by... We attempted emergency procedures, but triggered a, a cascade in the reactor and destroyed the facility. Wait, a resonance cascade? It's tracking me. Switching to frequency delta 4-5. Oh my god. What's pulling me inside? Transmission terminated. Okay, so this is 2092. We're getting a lot of good years. Why are there so many PS1 Alien FMV games? I don't know! That's a very good question. Why are there so many FMV Alien PS1 games? It's like kind of just, you know, generic sci-fi. How do you do it in 1996? Which is what this is. It was. It seemed like the live-action stuff was becoming more of a thing, and they were actually getting big-name actors to do, like, PC games, like Christopher Walken. I'm Major Kelt. This reassign is temporary, so don't get too comfortable. Count on it, sir. I'm against it, but Commander Templeton says you're the best he has, and it's time to give you another chance. Yeah, Tim chance. Curry. This is Lieutenant Underhill. Call Tarantino. Stay under her wing and out of my way. The floor drops at 0930. Be ready. Yes, sir. I wonder where the sets are for shit like this. That's an hour from now. Like, this is a cool yeah, set for a low-budget thing like this. Attitude loses big in Alpha Wing, Lieutenant. Right so next to the right porn sets. Oh. You know, doesn't anybody ever say welcome around here? You know, how you doing? Stuff like that. Are they on DS9? Like, look at this. I, I guess some of it might be matte or green screen, but it's just cool. I'll keep that in mind. Lieutenant Cross, this is Pachenko, Morris, and team leader Light Major Peterson. Call sign. Hopscotch, Digger, and... Is that Bill Murray? Red team's the place to be, stuntman. That's America's right, choice, Bill Murray. You've seen the tape. Great value, After Murray. 1,792 people got real quiet. We just made parking orbit around Saturn, so it's time to roll. I want you to remember your three R's. Recon, rescue, and recover the data. 
Questions? Yeah. We looking at the same thing that Frag Kepler colony on Mars? Kepler was an accident. The atmosphere. What if like it just switched to? Base. We don't know what happened here. Like a, right, a character. Ground to cover. Lagrange mining colonies are spread out. And they were played by like a now famous star. The team leaders will brief you on specific targets en route. One more thing. Blackjack shattered a femur in the rotor lock, so he's out for the duration. Lieutenant Jake Cross will be replaced. It's like, oh shit, that's Chris Pratt's they first movie. Below, so I want everyone to remind him that this is not Bravo. And we don't do circus tricks up here. Alright, clip in. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, live action mixed with mid 90s video game low budget CG. Fuck yeah. I live for that. Set course for Janus. Objective is to verify that the colony's satellite uplink towers are still standing. Those towers are down, that might be why no one answers our calls. They're not X-Wings, chat. They're V-Wings. Oh wait, that's a Star Wars thing too. They're, they're something else. Doesn't matter. Wing Commander had Mark Hamill and Malcolm McDowell. Well, that's... Yeah, I mean... Oh, it's Star Fox. Um, yeah, that's a different thing, because those were, like, the draws of the movie. And Malcolm McDowell would do anything. Look at that dude's credits on IMDb. He has been in, like, every movie. Well, it's, um, ugh, it's unfortunate, because this could have been cool. It's all over the place, control-wise, like, and it's so touchy, and then you immediately return back to your, like, sh like, position straight ahead. It's okay, it's okay, but comparing it to Star Fox 64, which is just, like, perfect controls for this type of thing, Nutmeg? Oh, you can do this. That's kind of neat. Can't do that in Star Fox. I mean... I mean, you can, but... Your camera doesn't go upside down. I did record the Star Fox hack. That'll be uploaded soon. Vinny, you're playing an arcade flight game with a D-pad. It might not be the game's fault. Nope, I point to D-pad Star Fox. I just played the original Star Fox... Um a mod of it called Star Fox EX and it is um you know just the uh, Super Nintendo Star Fox with more levels more ships it's crazy it's really really cool that game still controls really well with the d-pad for you know for its time this is not bad it's just so look at this like there's like a finesse that this doesn't have and I, I would assume many games wouldn't of their, you know, of this time, trying to do that thing. But, you know, that's what the process of 3D gaming was. Just trying to figure out how to make this shit work. How to get better at it with each game. And then when something like Star Fox 64 comes out, it's like... Hang on. Um, sorry. It's like, okay, Star Fox 64 comes out, then other devs that want to make a game like this can look at that, and they can say, oh... This controls really well, what did they do? And then you play a game like Ace Combat, and Ace Combat does its own thing too. So this is definitely pretty good for 1996. Nutmeg, still awake over there. Yeah, Nutmeg. But it's no Rogue Squadron. It's no Star, uh, Star Fox. Maybe it's a little bit unfair to compare this to games that didn't come out yet, you know? I, but I love the live action. It, it really is. There's a charm to these live action things. I, I kind of want to do... Like, I like showing off these games 
but I only show the intros, really, because it's, it's kind of too difficult to play through, you know, several full games in a row. But, um... I know Joel was doing FMV Friday, but I would love to do an FMV segment for, like, just the best FMV full motion video games with live action cutscenes. Remember Wirehead chat? Okay, for those new to the stream, if you want to see a good FMV game, well, I say good, it's fucking terrible, but it's hilarious. It's a game I played several years ago, it's called Wirehead. Look up gameplay of the game, you can watch my video. If you want to like, subscribe, smash the bell, you can, but you don't have to. Or you could just play it yourself, or watch someone else play it. But that's one of those bizarre ones that... It was just such a product of its time. Someone said, you're boring. Well, who's more boring, the boring person or the person watching the boring person? <laughs> Toonstruck with Christopher Lloyd. I did play that. Um... Listen, I do have one more. I don't think this is really worth spending too much time on. Because how alien is it? It's sci-fi. I mean, there are aliens, but... I'll show you, why not? We're going 4 hours 38 minutes, fuck it. I'll just show you a little bit of this. It's Small Soldiers, which is a movie I kind of liked when I was younger. It's pretty good. It is a, um, it's toys. There are soldiers and they are toys. Oh, EA. And DreamWorks. I'm pretty sure Tommy Lee Jones played the main character. I might have played this at some point. The end to every freedom known to Gorgonites. And now the war is coming here to Gorgon, our home world. can either wait patiently, build our reserves, and fashion our weapons, or we can go out to meet it. Now let the battle begin! What a brilliant idea it was to have a movie based on toys that you could just sell as toys. Oh yeah, Phil Hartman was the dad. So we got a Tommy Lee Jones connection and a Phil Hartman connection tonight. Interesting. But yeah, I think it's just brilliant marketing. Like even Toy Story. Insaniac. Insaniac. Weren't the small soldiers the good guys in the movie? No? W were, were these the good guys? The Gorgonites were the good ones. Oh. Boy, I really... really don't remember very much of it, do I? I remember them using... their... their weaponry. And, like... Um... Nope, I don't remember that movie. <laughs> I don't remember very much of it at all. They use their weaponry. Yeah, real specific, Vin. I guess for a movie tie-in, this doesn't play like complete garbage. Um, but again, this is like the... Br if I do a Bruce Willis showcase, where I do the Die Hard game, 
and Apocalypse and Fifth Element. Like, if I were to do something like that, those games play like this. But with worse frame rates. Wait, is this Sephiroth music? It's a 1998 PlayStation game, so, you know, it looks a little bit better than some of the, the uh, other ones we were playing, but... Yeah, it's just kind of one of these games. I, you know, this is stuff that I would rent and then be like, oh, okay. I guess I'll play through it. You go around, you shoot, you pick things up, you shoot some more. It's small soldiers. Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. It'd be nice to have more ways to pulp my opponents, but at the moment... Oh, I got one! I got a new way to pulp my opponents. Great. This game has vehicle segments. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. Um, the, the only thing we didn't get a chance to see was the Superman PS1 prototype. That's okay. All right, chat. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm using the RTC for this because it's just easier. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you for submitting the Play Lamau Station. I'm sure there's so many more alien games spread across many other systems that we could easily do another alien showcase. Um, I'm always open to segment ideas. If you have them, vinesauce.email, you can go there. I always appreciate suggestions, and when people compile stuff, it's it's just... It keeps Sunday Stream alive, which is something I want to do because I like Sunday Stream. And, you know, I appreciate it. But that'll be it for me tonight, everybody. Thank you once again, and um, I appreciate everything you do for my uh, streams and for me. And now I will go... During the week, I'll be playing more Mario Rabbids, of course, and uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what else really. I'm gonna do Vampire Survivors 1.0. They sent me a box of <laughs> Vampire Survivors stuff, and uh, that's kind of fun. But yeah, there's there's other stuff I wanted to play too. But my brain hurts right now, so I can't think of it. But it, on the Full Sauce channel, expect that Star Fox hack, which is really cool. And more things as well. So, okay. Good night. Oh, and uh, we may have another interesting multiplayer stream at some point planned. Me and uh, she says we're, we're talking about some fun stuff. Okay, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Thank you, mods. Thank you, everybody that joined the, tonight. And thank you, viewers. And hey, take a look at this.